So let's look now at sample time. Yeah, so that we have x of n, but we have still our frequency is still x of f. Yeah, so that's discrete discrete samples, but we have still continuous frequency. This will be very, very useful later on for FIR filter design. It's not just an academic exercise. Very often we write just x of omega, where, where this is just the frequency derived from the normalized frequency usually, and, um, and is defined as omega is just 2 pi f, and that's our normalized normalized frequency. Okay, let's write down the formulas for this. So x, x of omega is then just an integral running now in discrete time. And so we have got the x of n here. And then the typical exponential of the Fourier transform here. Yeah, so we are just generating our frequencies with this formula. So then the inverse x of n, so our inverse Fourier transform, then results into this here. Let's leave the boundaries here first open for the integral because that's important. So e to j omega n d omega. So now the question is, so what are the boundaries here? So in the analog case, remember the um, inverse Fourier transform, this ran from minus infinity to plus infinity here, but this, this can no longer be because we are in the sample domain. So what is the maximum frequency we can represent in x of n? So remember again this handy plot what I've been using probably quite a lot in the future. So we have got the plus one here, the minus one here of our x of n and n, and this corresponds to to our f Nyquist. In normalized terms, this is 0.5. Yeah, so remember here we are in the omega domain, so and therefore our integral runs from minus pi to plus pi. 